Let's do some more limits. Once again, we're talking about indeterminate form. So I look at these ones, I plug this one in, and I notice I get 0 over 0. That's my indeterminate form, which means I can do some algebra here and simplify this. Whenever you see roots, your first instinct should be multiply by the conjugate, meaning basically creating difference of squares. Because when I have difference of squares, those roots are going to go away. We'll see that in just a second. But if I multiply the top of a fraction by something, I need to also multiply the bottom by the same thing so that they balance out. So I've got this. Let's foil the top. So square root of x times square root of x is just x. Square root of x times positive 1 is a positive square root of x. Negative 1 times square root of x is a negative square root of x. And negative 1 times a positive 1 is a negative 1. So my middle terms are going to cancel out. And I am actually not even going to factor the bottom. Because, let me rewrite this so you can see this a little clearer. I have an x minus 1 on top which means I already have it to the place where something on top and bottom are going to cancel out. So I'm going to get the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over square root of x plus 1, which I can now do my direct substitution. And there we go. Okay, for this last one, I want to do the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. So let's plug this in. I have 2 over 2 minus 2. So this is going to be 2 over 0. And we stop right here because that is not our indeterminate form. 0 over 0 is our indeterminate form. This is a vertical asymptote, not a whole. So because this is not our indeterminate form, all we do is write that limit does not exist. We can't do it. And that's all for that one. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about continuity.